to start off with Sam, just tell us a little bit about your your background before you became a Muslim. So, grow up, grow up in uh, South Wales to a Baptist family. So I did grow up as a, I'll describe it as a cultural Christian, I think that's a very fair way to put it. Because when you grow up in a religion, I think, obviously you're a, you didn't, but I think it, you become numb to it. Yeah. It's just what you do, you go yeah. to church every Sunday, so what? Like, it's, it's kind of like that sort of thing. And then when you hit about the age of 16, you discover you discover girls, you discover alcohol, you discover all the fun things in life. Yeah, fun, so for, fun say, yeah, but you know, for a while, uh, religion wasn't important to me. Yeah. But I wouldn't say I stopped believing in God necessarily, but religion wasn't important. Okay, and, and, and how was it? How was it from that context that um, Islam started to appear on your radar? So when I hit about the age of 19, I did say to myself, so. My story, my story of how I got back into believing in God, I'm a very keen fisherman, sat on the river one day and I said to myself, why did this all happen? And then that's when I started looking back into religion, but wrongly I discounted Christianity, because I think I said to myself, I've been there, I've done that, I've grown up in a Christian family. The Trinity doesn't sound right, or original sin, that's that's not correct, you know. I thought I knew it all. I'm going to be honest, I was a bit arrogant about it. Um, and then one day I came across Speaker's Corner videos. I think the very first one I ever clicked on was SC Dower. I think it was Hashim versus someone. And it started from there. And I spent close to a year, just, I think it was about nine or ten months, just watching these videos every night, just, and watching other Islamic stuff. And in the end, I became convinced. And I came down here, um, and I joined uh, joined forces with one of the channels down here. I wouldn't say joined forces, I wasn't like a contributor or anything. But they were the brothers, and they were the ones I sought knowledge from, and they were my brothers in Islam, you know? So no, wait, wait, at what point in that process of... And, and it really demonstrates the importance of why we need Christian channels on YouTube taking on the Dawah team and doing evangelism in the park. And I appeal again to the churches that we need to support the evangelism that is happening here. There needs to be teams of evangelists with multimedia setups doing evangelism in the park. Now, you're watching these videos for a year. Um, did you give your shahada to someone within that time, or did you come down to the corner? Did you email someone? What happened? I had, I did my shahada over the phone to a to a Muslim brother, and because um, I got in touch with them how, how, uh, how through, did you, yeah. uh, through Facebook, actually. Um, right. You know, it's um, obviously they'll know EF Dower. Yeah. I got it. I got in touch with them through Facebook, and because um, I guess I still had one or two questions which you couldn't find in these videos, you know. So I needed those answers, so that's why I got in touch with them and there was a lovely brother I asked, um, you know, and he helped me along and he was the one who took my shahada. So, yeah, it's, um, it worked out that way really and, and then in the end, my first time coming down here was that famous occasion with you. But, yes. like, uh, but, uh, but that was me pretty much as a fresh Muslim. I think at that point I'd only been a Muslim for roughly three or four weeks. Okay, three or four weeks. And and how, how, how did your family react to you becoming a Muslim? Not great. Yeah. I lost I lost a fair bit becoming a Muslim, so I had nothing to gain. Like, um, I had some friends disown me, and uh, thank goodness my, my true friends stayed by me. Uh, my family didn't take me for it, per se, but they certainly weren't impressed, and they let me know that. You know, like, I wouldn't say I got any proper hatred from them, but life at home for a time was a bit uncomfortable. That's the best way to try and put it. Was your family cricket? Your family was Christian? Yes, exactly. So they didn't take... I think they would have rather me be an atheist in some respects than join another faith. Yeah. Even if I became a Jew, I think they would have given me the same reaction, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. But, but you know... It but they was, didn't beat you? No, 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 no. They didn't threaten to kill you? No, 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 no. They didn't kick you out of the home? No, no, no. But they, but they certainly were not impressed. Fair enough. And uh, they let me know that. But I certainly got a lot of hatred from friends and uh, yeah. I got disowned by a lot of people. Yeah. So there wasn't really anything to gain. And I also, you know, like, and it did give me relationship problems as well because I was with someone at the time yeah. who I cared about quite dearly and it caused problems with them, so there was not much to gain. It was about seeking the truth. Amen. And I mean that quite sincerely to any uh, any of the Dawah members who watch this. It really was about it. They will watch this, I promise you, and then they'll just slag you off and say that you were never really a Muslim in the first place. <laughs> um, they, so then then you started to integrate within the Islamic community. Tell us a little bit about your integration within Islam and within um, 
the, the, the Islamic circles? Let's put it this way. When you first become a Muslim, it's kind of, it's a, it's a strange experience because everyone loves it. You'll, love you'll, 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 meet, you'll meet people you've never met in your life and they act, it's almost like you've known them your whole life. Yes, yes. And um, so it's not hard in a way to integrate it. In a sense, it's not. It's, it's kind of easy. But, but if the harder part comes, at least in my case, because all of the Muslim brothers I had, bar one, were, were not local to me. They were all based, to say, in the London area or in England, I, and I had to travel a long way. So it was, Islam was a bit harder when you're in, on your own with your own thoughts. Yeah. That was when it could be quite difficult. Yeah. But something that did help me was either coming here or going to a mosque in Cardiff, which I did at the time quite enjoy, I won't deny that. And I even went on a retreat. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, retreat. Uh, retreat. And that was uh, very interesting, to say the least. Like, it, was, it was very basic, it just taught me all the basics of Islam, you know, the five pillars, who was Muhammad, how to pray, etc, etc. Very basic Islamic doctrines. And I will say this, there was one thing said at that Ayu retreat that was interesting and I'm happy to disclose this, they brought up the definition of terrorism according to the British government and said it was wrong. Okay. Now, I'm going to be honest, I blanked this little bit out a little bit because I couldn't. I was a bit in that sort of state of mind where I didn't want to hear this. Denial. Yeah, a little bit of denial, that's fair to say. So I can't quote exactly what was said, but I remember that bit and I always thought that seemed a bit strange. It is, so, an, in, it is an odd thing to, to raise. Um, on a Ayura retreat, if the point of the Ayura retreat is to teach the basics of Islam, how does a modern political concept about the definition of terrorism relate to teaching people about the basics of Islam? It seems to me that, that perhaps there's a bit of uh, throwing something out into the Afira to see what kind of energy comes back might be occurring um, in that. But that's that's something for the security services to I just maybe. Want, just wanted consider. to mention that one because I thought it was just rather strange. So well, I it thought, is. I thought it was worth mentioning that. But generally speaking, you know, the IRA retreat was good. You got to meet a lot of good people, and it was a lot of fun in a lot of respects. And and this kind of presents a challenge to the church. Look how, look how, how easily it was to be to be integrated, and how. The, the Islamic Dawah are concentrating on the formation of new Muslims. By contrast, how many churches do we know when a new person becomes a Christian, people are too cliquey to talk to them? We don't really celebrate the brotherhood because we're too interested in our friends. You know Christians, what I'm talking about, because it happens too much in our fellowships. How, do we, how can we expect there to be converts? if we don't have a kind of attitude that embraces the convert when they come. The one thing Christianity can definitely learn from Islam is the network of support that you get. If you ever have a question or something, there'll always be someone you could message, or ring, blah, 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 and you would get an answer. There, yep. there is always the network of support you can get within Islam is, to be fair, it's really good. Yeah. Like, I won't deny that. It's really good. Um, and and, and the, church, the, church has, the church has got to be much more deliberate about these things, about how we support converts. Because unless we have a much more deliberate attitude to helping and building up and, and forming converts, we, we, we won't hold on to the converts we make. And that is exactly what is happening in the church. Now, Sam. You talked about your integration, you talked about the fact that you, you went to the mosque in Cardiff, that you were making Muslim friends, that you were going on a retreat teaching you about the basics of Islam. Um, what was it that started, because you, you, how, how long you were uh, a Muslim for about two and a half years? About, about two and a half years, maybe slightly shy, but okay. roughly that time. What was it that started to cause you to doubt? The very first thing, and I don't think I might be the only ex-Muslim who will ever say this, was that de famous debate between Mohammed Hijab and David Wood. Thank you, Mohammed Hijab. <laughs> Checks in the post. <laughs> That was the first doubt anyway. Let's put it this way. We all know what, what caused a lot of uh, Muslims to doubt. They don't need to get into that. But at the time, I guess I looked at it like this. I'm not the sort of person to run at the first sign of trouble. So I, so I stood back and I thought to myself, maybe an answer will come up for this at some point. But none ever did, so it just lingered there. And then eventually there were questions about the preservation of the Quran propping up, and that started to affect me as well. Well Before, done, Hatun! Be, Hatun yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, shout out Hatun. But like, um, and Jay Smith. And Jay Smith. But, and basically, I look at one thing that's... At the end of the day with Islam, the Quran is such an important tenet. 
if that collapses, it's like it's like the house of cards. The whole thing collapses. And for me personally, because the Quran makes a claim that it is the unchanged word of God. That's a very, very, very strong claim to make. And that's what you were told when you yes. became a Muslim. Yes. I, you were told that. Oh, yes. Yeah. Like, and to be fair, we're going back far enough when they were still making that claim. To be fair. Yeah. Okay. But but anyways, the point is, is that when that house of cards comes down, the rest of it comes down. Because um, like uh, the Muslim brothers, ex-Muslim brothers, anyway, who know me will know that I was never too keen on the hadiths anyway. But the Quran was always very important to me. And when that started to go for me, that's it. Why, that, why weren't you keen on the hadiths? What was it about the hadiths? Reliability. Yes. That was the main thing, because it felt like it was just a massive game of Chinese whispers. Yeah. Literally, like that, that's what it came across as. Like, I don't care how how much this person's reliable, etc., etc. It just, it's like, you know, you're just reporting what other people have said. And, and that's our experience of debating Muslims in the park. They literally tell us, well, you've got to see if the hadith is sahih. And Christians base virtually all of their arguments on Sahih Hadiths and then whenever the Muslims find that those Hadiths are inconvenient they just chuck them under the bus yeah, and it's like we said to them but it's Sahih what does Sahih mean and then they go it means reliable so is it reliable no <laughs> and, and, and this is something we find it's sifting sand to clarify I was Sunni and I did accept the Hadiths because there are things in there about how to pray how to fast etc etc so I'm not gonna say I denied them but definitely, they were, not, uh, they were a shaky ground for me always. Yeah. So in the end, I think I reached a stage where I just decided not to engage with them and I engaged with the Quran more, but it didn't mean I rejected the Hadiths altogether. And what was it that led you to finally reject Islam? In a way, I think, in my own way, I had sort of rejected it for a while, but I needed the bravery to do it. I was scared. I'm not going to deny that, I was scared. So. And if you like, I ended up contacting yourself and JC, and thanks to JC for rooting me out. <laughs> I was not funny, JC. I <laughs> need to check with your counsellors yeah, before yeah. you do things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but when he when he did root me out, I thought I might as well own this. Yeah. Yeah. That was my attitude. Before that, I was just going to try and slip quietly into out. the background. Yeah. But I thought, the as I got outed, I'm going to own this now. But also, I guess in the process. I started to just re-look at the case for Christianity. Now, anyone who remembers, I had a go at Bob. I wasn't keen on him. I'm not gonna use the exact word I would use to, uh, what I thought of him, but you know, yeah. I was not keen on him. But one day, when I, during the time I was having my doubts, there was a video of his that popped up on Soka, and I just said, I'm gonna watch it, but I'm not gonna listen to him. I'm gonna listen to what he says. That's what I said to myself, because I believe it or not, I couldn't stand it. Yeah. I'm not joking, I'm sorry, mate, but that's the case. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> But watching, but watching this video opened up my eyes a bit, and it made me reevaluate the case for Christianity. Do you remember the title of the video, Tom? It was the one where he had that conversation with Omar was it? about uh, the white people. Um, I don't remember. It was, little, it was a little like teenage guy. Is he really short? Yeah, he Is it the only Muslim? No, no, no. He was. Um, he had curly hair and stuff. Uh, he was young. Me? Yeah, yeah. I think I know what he's talking about, but I don't remember the name of the video. Okay, have to look. Yeah. But. So, so that right. opened your eyes a bit. By the way, JC doesn't send me a check. Just saying, <laughs> you know. Um, so, no one's sending me a check. <laughs> but thanks be to God, you, you you open your eyes. And then, what what was it that finally made you make that decision to recommit your life to Jesus and to become His disciple again? I think, um, I, like I say, I've always been a theist. I do not believe, like for example, the world was an accident, etc., etc. And I guess um, you look. So obviously in Islam you're given Muhammad as the perfect example. Admittedly he's not God like Jesus is, but he's still the perfect example. And yet there were lots of things that Muhammad has done. He's not a perfect example. And I thought to myself, if I'm going to truly follow someone, they would actually have to be a genuine perfect example. And Jesus it was exactly that. I guess the only sticking point I had with Christianity was the idea of original sin. But that's why you explained it to me. Yeah. In a way that I understood it. On the phone. And there we go. Yeah, on the phone. <laughs> and uh, oh, and that was that. That was that became my because even with the Trinity, I watched you debate Hashim and stuff like yeah. that. And so that explained it to me a lot better as well, because I had misconceptions about that. But there were no debates about you doing original sin. Yeah. So that's why I thought I want to get in touch with this guy and actually pick his brains on it. But but um, I guess in a way, I wonder whether my heart was always there. Yeah. My heart was always with Jesus. Yeah. Maybe it needed a push. Well, Jesus, Jesus said that none, none can take from my hand those that have been given to me by my Father. 
And if and, and if you're one of the sheep of Christ, then then no one can pluck you out of His hand. You know. So, I mean, and when you when you have reintegrated, when you've recommitted your your life to Christ, um, how are you finding the church now? I guess. Uh, Let's put it this way, certainly life is a lot more peaceful and less stressful. Probably going to become more stressful now, but never mind. But, um, but I guess I feel a proper... Like, one thing that Islam is meant to teach you is apparently is inner peace. I will admit, I guess I never found that. In, in, being more sincere with Christianity this time, I have actually found it. The, 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 the world just seems and feels a bit different. I know, I know that might sound like a cliche, but it does. Yeah. And. Um, you view people differently. All people are made in the image of God, and everyone. God loves everyone. Even like, as I want to put this disclaimer out to all the to all my ex-Muslim brothers, know that this is not done out of malice. This is not done out of hate. This is not done as a vendetta. Because you might be thinking, why are you with God? It's got nothing to do with that. This is just about me sharing my story for people who might have been in a similar situation. And that's all it is. I'm just doing what I feel is right. And this is not an attack on any of you. I'm sorry, Bob. I no, that's right. That well, yeah, absolutely. What, 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 what would you say to um, former... What would you say to Muslims who are like you? They've got their, their, their question marks. They've got this, this claim that Christ, who Christ is. They've got their doubts about Islam. What would you say to them? Look into Christianity, but with more of an open heart. Don't look at it, try not to look at it from maybe the Islamic perspective. You're going to fail every time. Just look at it, I'm not even going to say through a Christian lens, just through your lens. Does it feel right to you? And I believe that it will, because that's what I did. I didn't look through Christianity wanting it to be true. I looked at Christianity thinking, is it true? Amen. And that's all I did. Amen. Well, peace be with you, Good to have you in faith. God bless you. One, la one question for Sam. Okay, go, question go on, for Sam. I might edit it. So basically, I'm, I'm sure you're going to get this from a lot of Muslims once they see this video. And um, will you be able to recite Surah Al Fatiha? You mean in two years? I mean, that that pronounce, that pronunciation would be off. Just give it a try because it's obviously going to be Muslims say, oh, I think he didn't know the Surah By the way, someone's pronunciation. Yeah. If your argument is that his pronunciation is off and therefore he's not really a Muslim, what you're really saying is that the level that defines that whether you're a real Muslim or not is how Arab. You are. Ah, okay. So, as in your loudest, clearest voice, yeah. give okay, us Al Fatiha. I'll, I'll yes. try it my best, but like I say, no, no one, no, well, you know, you, Arabic is not Bismillah. your first language. Bismillah, ir Rahman, ir Rahim, Alhamdulillah, ir Rabbil Alameen, ir Rahman, ir Rahim, Iyaka, Ibudu, Yaka, Nastaim. I have to think now. I, would, I know. Oh. That's right. I've actually forgotten one line, but I know the next bit Go is Alehim Walidarlim. I mean, okay, there's well, a little few bits that have escaped my mind because you put me on the spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, don't worry. Well done. Thank you, Sam. Yeah, thank you. Because uh, obviously, obviously, you know, he's really just fake, he's an actor. I, I'm paying him a bunga money and he learned that. <laughs> I got a million night. quid. I got a million uh, quid. Like, well, yeah. he might be. Yeah. <laughs> so, so guys, there you go. Proof positive that this kind of evangelism works. It is something that the church needs to take seriously. The Church of England needs to have trained evangelists here. The Roman Catholic Church needs to have trained evangelists here. The Orthodox Church needs to have evangelists here. The Calvinist fellowships need to have evangelists here. They need to be working in teams. They need to be working with one another. They need to be using social media and they need to be reaching out to people. Yeah. It works. The reason why there aren't more converts from Islam like Sam yeah. is because there aren't more evangelists like Bob. You know, if <laughs> I, hate, I hated him, by the way. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. If there are more evangelists, there will be. If there are more evangelists, yeah. there will be more converts. Yeah. So the church needs to get back into evangelism seriously. And Muslims, yeah. you can deny as much as you like the idea that there are Muslims leaving Islam. Okay. The fact is we know they are <laughs> and I hope you continue to deny it because yeah. whilst ever you're denying it, yeah. it just makes our job easier. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Shansi. Thank you, Mohammed Hijab. Thank you, Mohammed Hijab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, Bye, peace for you, bro. Peace for you.